Hi, how is it going? This was not an initially planned video, but I thought it could be interesting to show how to create this pixel art effect we used for our video, Renfe My Train, which has been highly inspired from Harkiado's video Make My Train. Firstly, I will look for a side view picture of a train. Since we are looking for an aided aesthetic, I will look for a picture of a Japanese 100 series Shinkansen, which was the newest model back then. But you can look for any train or any other vehicle of your choice. Now let's create our pixel art in Photoshop. You can use any other software as long as it allows you to resize your image using the interpolation mode nearest nightboard or disable anti-aliasing. Otherwise, the end result will look blurry and it will completely screw your work. Let's open a small canvas and import our picture here. Make it smaller and lower the opacity. Now, in a new layer, let's start drawing by right-clicking on the brush tool and select the pencil tool. Make sure the size is set to 1 pixel and hardness to 100%. There are ways to automatically convert an image to pixel art but I think there's no harm in doing it by yourself. Plus, this way we have more control over how our end result will look like. If you make a happy little accident, we can pick the eraser tool and again make sure size is set to 1 pixel and hardness to 100%. Or hold the Alt key and then hold right click while moving your mouse left to right to change size or up and down to change the hardness. Once we are done, we will duplicate the layer pressing Ctrl plus J. Let's hide the layer below and we will select a portion of the upper part of the train and move it one pixel downwards to create a bouncing animation later on. Press C to select the crop tool and while holding Shift and Alt, make the canvas bigger. Then select both of your layers and press Ctrl T. Make sure the nearest snake board is selected and do the same thing. We will have to save two pictures, one for each layer we created. Make sure to save them as PNG files with transparent background. Ok, now let's fire up Premiere Pro and import both images. I am working on a 30fps sequence and I like making the full pictures be 5 frames long and the crouching one 3 frames. But it really depends on the personal taste and how fast you want the animation to be. Now we can make copies by holding Alt key and dragging them on the timeline. As an additional step, we can nest all our pictures and look for the transform effect. Apply it and create some keyframes on the position. Right click on them and select Temporal Interpolation Bezier. Now we can change the smoothness of our animation. Scroll down and uncheck Use Composition Shutter Angle. I will set the shutter angle to 360 to create a prominent motion blur effect. And here we have our train bouncing animation. Now it is time to make the background. If you have the same version of Premiere Pro and After Effects, you can right click on your project panel and create a new item, black video. This way we can freely choose how long our background animation will be. Right click on it and hit replace with After Effects composition. Now in After Effects, I will import this Mount Fuji footage I downloaded. We don't need the black background anymore. The reason why I like doing it this way is because if we jump back to Premiere Pro, our link composition will be updated at real time. Now in the effect search box, we are going to type balls, but actually, we will delete the last S so that we can apply the CC ball action effect. You can play around with the values. I will leave the grid spacing to 4 and the ball size to 100. Now look for the CC lens effect and mess with the values until you get an old TV look. Now duplicate the layer by pressing Ctrl D until you have three copies of your footage. Apply the channel mixer effect on each copy and leave active just the red channel in one layer, the green in another one and the blue in the last one. Now change the blending mode to screen for the three layers. 
If you can't find this option, right click and check Columns, Bonds. Now, with your layer selected, you may press P on your keyboard and move the horizontal value just a tiny bit to the left for one layer and a tiny bit to the right for another one. We are almost there. Now, as a final touch, we can select all layers, right click on it, pre-compose, check move all attributes into the new composition and hit OK. Duplicate your pre-composed layer and add a bit of Gaussian blur to it. Then change the blending mode to lighten, and we can press T on the keyboard to lower the opacity. And it is how it looks like if we go back to Premiere Pro. As an additional step, we can look for the posterized time effect and set the frame rate to something like 10 or 15 to make it look even more like a laggy retro video. We can also download the glitch effect footage and import it to After Effects and check it and create a new adjustment layer. Look for the displacement map and in the displacement map layer, select your glitch footage. You can play around with the values until you find the one that best suits your desires. And here it is, our final result. Maybe it has been a bit of a long tutorial, but we hope it has been helpful for you to learn something new or at least to give you some ideas for your projects. Thanks for watching and feel free to leave your thoughts in the comment section below.